I'm excited to be here with y'all and to talk about a topic that honestly is really near and dear to my heart, and that is hearing the voice of God. When I talk to people, and this has been like my struggle through my walk with God at times, is typically I hear either, how do I hear the voice of God? Or the question, how do I know it's God, right? That's really like a big question for us is like, how do I know that it's God? And so tonight, we're going we're gonna to dive into that here at Sunset Hills, at RPC campus, at Ferguson Florida State. Can we actually give it up for our Royal Palm Chapel campus and the Ferguson Florida State campus <laughs> online? And uh, I'm excited. So Pastor Nia told me just earlier, she said, don't forget us at Ferguson, and I could never. Uh, so we're going to start in 1 Samuel 3, verse 3. And it says this, Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli, And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. And at that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. And the lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark was. Now the Lord called Samuel and he said, Here I am. And ran to Eli, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay back down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lay down, and if he calls you again, you should say, Speak, Lord. For your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and the Lord came and stood, calling out as the other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. So it's really interesting as we start off on this passage, is it says the word of the Lord is rare. And I feel like at times we can feel like that. Like there's so much going on in the world that we're like, man, how do I hear God. You know, there's so much noise going on, and we can feel like it's rare. And really in that time, it was rare for two reasons. The first is spiritual decline. And so it was during the time of the judges, and in the time of the judges, you have to understand you've got the Israelites were in Egypt, okay? They're enslaved in Egypt, and God takes them out of Egypt. And when they come out of Egypt, they are moving through the desert, and they're supposed to move to the promised land. But what happens is the people don't trust God, and they end up wandering in the promised land for 40 years. After that 40 years, God does something really miraculous. He doesn't just part the Red Sea as he did when they were leaving Egypt. He actually parts a sea the second time. He parts the Jordan River, and he gives a whole other generation a glimpse of his power, and he does it again for the people. And again, you would think that would be enough for people to be like, man, God is God. Hello. You know what I mean? But they go across, and it it says this in Judges 2.10. It says, And there arose another generation after them who did not know the Lord or the work that he had done for Israel. And so the people had forgotten. They had forgotten God parting the Red Sea. They had forgotten the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. They'd forgotten manna from heaven. They'd forgotten all the wonderful works God did. And it brings me to this thought that one of the biggest problems with our current generation is that people have forgotten what God has done for them. They've forgotten what God has done for them. And that's why we have to talk about it all the time. We have to tell people we serve a big, mighty, powerful God, one that can do the miraculous, the song we just sang, all the miracles I've seen. We've got to talk about what we've seen God doing. Because we're in a world that is lost and hurting. They don't understand the God that we serve. And so we have to tell them. And you may say, well, Pastor Micah, it's really hard. I can't eloquently share my faith. And so I want to tell you, this is how you do it, okay? I was lost, but now I'm found. That's about the crux of it. Because the fact is, it's not Allah that can save. It's not Buddha that saves. It's not yoga that saves. It's not crystal that saves. It's Jesus that saves. And we've got to tell people, I was lost in my sin and hurting, and Jesus rescued me. Yet, 
in this generation, they didn't do that, okay? And so we come to Judges 17, 6, and it says this, everyone did what was right in their own eyes. And so rather than allowing God to lead them, they allowed the world to lead them. They allowed what they felt was good to lead them. There's a second thing that happened, and that was a corrupt priesthood. See, Eli is the high priest. He is the spiritual overseer for Israel at the time. Okay, we now know we have a high priest that can't be corrupt, can't be evil. That's Jesus. Jesus is our high priest. But at the time, Eli was that example. And here's what's really interesting for me, and we're going to throw this verse up because I want to point out some things to you. In 1 Samuel 3, verse 1 through 2, it says this. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days, and there was no frequent vision. Okay? The next part of the verse says this. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim. So you have the spiritual leader. His eyesight is growing dim. What does that mean? He can't see. What if it's not happening? There's no vision from the Lord. You see the parallel, right? So it grows dim so he could not see. It says he was lying down in his own place. And what's interesting on that is we'll read later that Samuel, you heard it earlier, was laying near the Ark of the Covenant, which represented the presence of God. Samuel's in the presence of God and Eli's in his own place. Sometimes where you're at makes all the difference when receiving from God. And so we got to make sure that we're in the right place. So God calls Samuel and Samuel at the time is just a boy. And here's how he gets there. Okay. Samuel's father was married to two women. Okay. Hello problems. Okay. It's Old Testament. Don't try that now. Okay. So anyway, Married to two women. One of them he really, really loved. Her name was Hannah, and she was barren. And the other one bore him lots of children, and that's pretty much why she was there. And they would come to the temple for the sacrifice. And when they would come to the temple, the husband would give Hannah, who he favored, a double portion. And he would pray that God would open her womb. And Hannah goes before the priest, and she's praying, and she tells the Lord, Lord, if you would give me a baby, if you would open my womb, as soon as he is weaned, I will dedicate him to you and he will grow up in the house of the Lord. And God answers her request and gives her Samuel. And that's where we pick up with Samuel. And so with this story of Samuel, I want to give you just a couple important lessons that we learn from hearing God's voice. And then what I want to do is after we learn, okay, how do we hear God's voice is how do we know it's God? All right, everyone good with that? You ready for that tonight? Okay, here's the first one. First, Samuel positioned himself to hear the voice of God. The lamp of God, says this in verse 3, had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark was. And so that ark is the presence of God. If you want to hear from God, get in the presence of God. That's the first step. You say, man, I really want to hear from the Lord. Well, where are you spending your time? Where are you finding yourself? Are you gravitating towards the wrong things? Or are you gravitating towards the right things? There's a thing. You guys may not know this for me. So I'm going I'm to come over here so you can see them. Um, so we can get this real close. And I'll just say hi to Florida and hi to Ferguson and hi to online. I might be too close. Okay, here we go. Y'all may not know this, but I have hearing aids. And so if you've ever said hi to me in the lobby and it was really loud and I walked by, I promise you, I wasn't trying to ignore you. I didn't hear you, okay? It's a problem for me. But I wear these. I'm not going to take them both out or I won't be able to hear myself and then it'll be real weird up here. But I wear these hearing aids. The hearing aids amplify, which is great if I'm in a one-on-one -on -one conversation. But the problem is that if I'm in a loud room, they don't just amplify the voice of the person that I'm talking to. They amplify everything in the room, Okay. When I first got my hearing aids, I didn't realize how deaf I was until I went to the doctor and they said, hey, if you don't get hearing aids, you don't get them quick, you're going to go deaf completely because the way that your nerves work in your ear, if they're not getting stimulated and you can't hear actual words, your brain will forget the words you don't hear. And so you will lose vocabulary, okay? I'm a writer. That would be like the worst thing in the world to me, okay? Not to know words anymore, okay? So... I get the hearing aid, 
And when I get them, I put them in. Have you guys ever seen like the Spider-Man movie, like the first Spider-Man movie where he gets his powers and all of a sudden like everything's going crazy? Okay, someone could crinkle a piece of paper three blocks away and I'm like, turn it off! You know, it was horrible. But it amplifies everything, okay? And the problem is, is that everything becomes so noisy. And so what I have to do is intentionally, and you might have seen this, you've ever talked to me in the lobby, it's real loud. I will lean in like this so I can hear what you're saying because I've got to focus in on what the person is saying and drown out all of the other noise going around me so I can hear. And when the world is chaotic and you feel like I can't hear God, get away from the chaos and lean in and say, God, I want you to speak to me. I want to hear, tell me what you want me to do. The second thing is Samuel postured himself to hear the voice of God. In verse four, it says this, the Lord came to Samuel and he said, here I am and ran to Eli and said, here I am for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down, and the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. And Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. You got to think, though, for real, in this moment, this is a side thing. Samuel's probably like, dude, this dude is jacking with me. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like he's like, Samuel. And Samuel's like, yeah, what? And he's like, nah, man, go back to bed. He comes again. He's like, yeah, well, you, you called me. He's like, no, 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 no. Go back to bed. I, I didn't call you. He's like, dude, this joker is jacking with me. He is bored in the middle of the night and wanting to mess with my sleep. But here's what I love about Samuel is every time Samuel's called, he comes running. He hears. He doesn't even know it's God. He thinks it's his master, which ultimately it is his master, right? It's God. And he hears the master's voice, and his first instinct is to say, here I am. What do you need from me? That's a posture of a heart that can hear from God. God wants people that are saying, God, I don't know how crazy the call is, but whatever the call is, here I am. I'm ready to do it. I want to go. Call me. And here's the thing you have to understand. When you're in your time with God, you can't do all the talking. Sometimes we go in and we're like, God, like this can be a prayer, and I pray these prayers. Lord, just help me, and also deal with this person, and also it'd be really great if this could happen. Also this, thank you, God. And then you leave, and you're like, man, I don't feel like I hear from the Lord. I mean, I've been praying. <laughs> and it's like, bro, you didn't shut up. You know what I mean? It's like sometimes we need to stop talking so much, you know? I got a, I got a statement for you. I really like this one. It said, God gave us one tongue and two ears so we could hear twice as much as we speak, Okay. <laughs> Some of y'all, that's a word from the Lord for you tonight, you know. <laughs> One of my favorite scriptures is Proverbs 17, 28. It says, even the fool seems wise when he keeps his mouth shut, okay. I say it to myself all the time. Even a fool seems wise, you know. If you guys are like, man, Pastor Micah, he's just real stoic and wise. I'm just telling myself that scripture over and over, okay, all the time. Keep your mouth shut. Number three. Samuel prepared himself to hear the voice of God. It says in 1 Samuel 3, verse 8, And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. And Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and the Lord came and stood, calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak for your servant hears. Samuel prepared to hear from the Lord. Sometimes it's like the expectation. You know what I mean? It's like the idea of like when God calls, I know I'm going to answer. And so I've got an expectation that he's going to call. God loves to show up. Like God loves for us to put him to the test and go, God, I'm going to be faithful, and I'm going to believe that you're going to be faithful. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to have the faith for it, and you're going to be the one to do it. And God loves to show up in power and show himself over and over and over again. 
And so Samuel prepares. And once Samuel understood that God was calling him, he responded with an openness and humility, saying, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And I've got another statement for you. It says this, The longer we wait to obey, the harder it becomes to do it. The longer we wait to obey, the harder it becomes to do it. Because we are the best at convincing ourselves not to do things that are hard. We are the best at it. I am the best at it, okay? It's like, man, I really should work out. And I'm like, I'm working out tomorrow. You know, like late night, you know, you think you're the, you can do anything. You know what I mean? Like you're about to fall asleep. You're like, I'm going to do it tomorrow. You know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to get up and read a book. I'm going to read like the entire Bible tomorrow. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to read the Bible. I'm going to read three leadership books. I'm going to work out. I'm going to eat a healthy breakfast. This is all before breakfast, y'all. Then I'm going into work. I'm going to be the best boss anyone's ever had. I'm going to be the most encouraging, the most excited. I'm going to get pumped up. Everyone's going with me. And then, and then the next morning you wake up and you're like, I'm a little tired. I'm going to hit snooze. I was up a little too late. Donuts really are better for you. You know what I mean? Like, they at least taste better to you. You know what I mean? I don't feel like working out. I got too many meetings. I got too much going on. I'm an important person. I can't work out. And we talk ourselves out of it. And what happens is the longer you wait, the harder it becomes. But if we purpose in our heart, That we're waiting on the Lord. I love Pastor Phil last week. It's so interesting. We did not plan this. But he talked about waiting on the Lord last week. And we're talking about hearing from the Lord today. Those two things go together. Okay. So as you're waiting on the Lord. If you didn't listen to his message. Go back and listen. As you're waiting on the Lord. Then you can hear from the Lord. And when you hear from the Lord. You got to do what the Lord says. As fast as possible. Because the faster you act. The faster you receive. The faster things start to move in the direction. You want them to go. And so Samuel didn't initially hear God's voice. He heard, well, it's actually not true. He heard God's voice, just didn't know it was God's voice. I think that's really interesting. Like he heard God's voice, but it said he didn't know the Lord. He hadn't tuned himself to hear what God sounds like. He hadn't heard the Lord. And therefore he needed someone to point it out to him. And once they did, he was like, oh, that's God. Once God responded again, he was like, man, I can act on that. I know that's the Lord. God speaks in different ways. I I know Pastor David talks about like he gets dreams from the Lord. If I get dreams, I don't remember them. So God, please stop speaking to me that way. You know what I mean? It's like, I hope he's not speaking in dreams because I'm not hearing it. When I wake up, I don't remember anything that happened, okay? I am comatose at night. But this is how God does speak to me. I've learned to tune this over time is when I pray, the Lord will put things in my heart and he'll tell me, shouldn't have said that. Shouldn't have done that. Should have taken that opportunity to encourage that person. You need to go back and apologize. You don't need to do that anymore. Whatever those things are. I I had a a situation one time with with one of my kids and, and I responded to them in a way that wasn't kind. And I did it in front of a group of people that like they were friends with and it embarrassed them. And in my gut, the Lord started to speak to me and I thought, no, they deserve it. You know what I mean? Like they've been, they've been really trying my patience. They deserve it. You know, like sometimes you're just like, no, no, you know, no Lord. But the Lord really did like convict my heart. And, and we have a rule that I try to follow as much as possible. And that is, if you hurt somebody in front of people, you go back and make it right in front of those people. And so I went back to them and apologized in front of all their friends. Now that wasn't fun on my part, okay? But it was necessary. And I knew it was the Lord. I knew the Lord had spoke to me and corrected me in that moment and said, don't be that way. Be the dad that they deserve and don't just act out of your frustration or your anger or whatever's going on in your heart. Does that make sense? And so here's some ways that we can hear from God. The first is this, consistency with scripture. If God spoke to you, 
and it goes against the Bible, God did not speak to you. That's not how it works, okay? The Lord is not writing a new Bible as you are not the prophet. You know what I mean? It's like, that's not how it's happening, okay? The Bible is the eternal word of God. He wrote it, says it was inspired by the Holy Spirit. That is God. The Bible was written and inspired by the Holy Spirit. And our job is to weigh what we feel against what we know, which is the word of God. And here is a challenge to all of us. If you say, well, I don't know the word of God, get in the word of God so you know it, so you know if it's God. You know what I mean? Like, and if you don't know it, Google it, okay? Google it. (laughs) Number two, God's character. You have to ask yourself, does this reflect the heart of God? I think about that a lot. Like, like, (laughs) it's like before I speak, I'm like, is it kind? (laughs) Is it helpful? Does it reflect God's heart? I'm going to say it anyway. You know what I mean? No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) But that's like a real thing. It's like, does it reflect the character of God? Because the character of God is loving and kind and gentle and not self-serving. And so if what you feel in your heart goes against God, if it's like, you know what? I feel like I should just steal that money. That's not the Lord, okay? That's not from God. That's not his character. God is not a thief. So we've got to ask, does it reflect the character of God. And then the final one is you got to seek wise counsel and confirmation. Not any counsel, okay? Not Jeff from down the street, okay? <laughs> Jeff's out mowing his lawn. You're like, Jeff, do you think this is from the Lord? Not that. Wise counsel. You got to weigh it against people who are going to speak into your life in a way that is actually helpful. This is why connect groups are so vitally important. Because here's the, here's the truth about connect groups, okay? You can have a lot of people in your life, and there's a lot of people that you can talk to, but in a connect group, you have the same people that go to the same church, that are sitting under the same word, that are trying to move in the same direction as you. And they know more about what God is speaking in that moment than a random person outside of this place that you're at. And when you get into a group, you have people around you that are going to help you and guide you and move you in the direction you need to go. I was talking to somebody today, and and we were talking about this, and I was telling them, you know, listening to outside messages, okay, Stephen Furtick or whoever it is, like, that's, that's great. But what's the most important is being under the word in the house that you're planted in. Because God will speak to your pastor, okay, Pastor David. God will speak to him and say, this is the word for these people at this time. And when we show up, God will give you what you need in that moment because God is using him to minister to the people that he oversees at this time. And when you get into a group, With those same people, it will change your life. And so there's an opportunity. I actually, I was on the front row and Pastor Phil was like, dude, you freaked me out. Because I just like beeline to the back. And I I grabbed one of these cards. I came back. But this weekend, Pastor David is going to start the mind-gut connection. And he's been talking about this for like three weeks. Like excitedly talking about it. It feels like it's from the Lord. That the Lord told him that this is what he should talk about. And Basically, because there's a lot of people that are going on in things mental health wise or in their health, and it's affecting them spiritually. You know, we are holistic beings is what the Bible says. And that means that you are body, mind, and spirit. And if one of those is off, it throws the other things off. And so we got to take care of all three of those things. If you want the best for what God has for you, you've got to get all three of those things in check. And so this is going to be a series you don't want to miss. Here's what's really cool is Doc Fasella and Dom, Don Strange, uh, text me today. And they are actually planning a connect group based off this series. 
It's going to be running in tandem with the series. And they're going to talk about physical health and all of the things that go into it. And you'll be able to be a part of it. I think the first part is on Zoom. You can find out at the Connect Group area in the lobby. But the first part is on Zoom. And so you can watch that no matter where you're at. If you're in Florida, you can be a part of that and learn that. I think that's so cool that we can join from any state that we're in and be a part of that for that thing. And then Doc Fasella is going to talk about it. He's actually going to do it here at Sunset. And we, again, can do something through Zoom probably, but he's going to do it right here in the auditorium. It's going to be really great. But you want to seek wise counsel. You've heard PD say this. You need people who know you, K-N-O-W, and you need people that know you, (laughs) N-O. Hey, don't do that. That's not good. I I was talking with Pastor Phil earlier, and, and I was talking about my message And I had a story in there and he was like, hey, I wouldn't share that story, you know. And he knowed me right there. And I was like, you got it, sir. Thank you. You know, (laughs) because you need people in your life to tell you, hey, I I wouldn't do that if I were you. You know what I mean? We want to make sure that we're in the right spot. And so I want to pray for you. And I want to pray that God would speak to you now in this moment. And I, I believe that he will because the Bible says that when we call God answers, you know, the, the, the question is never, is God speaking to me? The question is, am I listening? Because God is speaking all the time. And here's what's so cool about God. It's not just in the big things. Like sometimes we think God's like going to come down and like fire. You know what I mean? It's like God, if God came down, I remember, uh, and one time I was like, man, I just want God to send me a sign. I want like a burning bush, you know what I mean? Like I want to walk out my house. There's just a bush of fire like talking to me, you know? But God doesn't always speak like that. I think of the prophet Elijah. He has this really big thing that happens and, and he runs into hiding and it says that there was a mighty wind that comes and it says, but God wasn't in the wind. So there's a mighty earthquake that came and shake the whole place. And you would think God would be in that earthquake. It's pretty mighty. And yet God wasn't in that earthquake. It says, and then the Lord came, and it was a gentle whisper. God's got a gentle whisper for you tonight. And it could be something big. It could be a new location. It could be a new job. But it also could be, hey, the way that you're talking to your spouse, don't talk that way anymore. The way that you're talking to your kids, the the way that you are interacting with your coworkers. Listen, you're being too negative or you're being too this, or it could be, hey, you've got a plan and a purpose. Maybe you're feeling depressed or you're feeling alone and God wants to tell you, listen, you're not alone. I love you. God wants to speak to you tonight and I believe that he will. And so right now, I just want all of us to stretch our hands. I want us to stretch our hands towards heaven, whether you're online, wherever you're at, Florida, RPC, Ferguson, and we're going to pray. God, we thank you that you are the God that speaks to us, that we don't have to wonder if you care. We know that you care. And God, I believe that you're ministering to people right now, that your presence is moving in every seat, in every aisle. It's moving in every home. God, we know that your word says that when we call, you answer. And so we're asking you, Lord, to speak right now. God, give people a word. God, encourage people. God, give people direction of where they need to go. Help them to know that you're here and that you're moving. And then God, we, we purpose in our hearts that when we go out of this place, we won't leave what we heard in this place, but we're gonna take it into tonight and tomorrow and the next day and the next day because we know that drawing near to you and getting direction from you is what we need. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, thank you for watching Faith Church on YouTube. And I want you to subscribe so you can know whenever we go live and post new content. You can also comment below and let us know if the message spoke to you. When you're watching, also know that we want to pray for you. We want to know what's going on in your world. So you can comment below and we'll pray for you. Thanks again for watching on YouTube and we'll see you next time.